All right, so what we're going to be learning about here is how to solve three-step stoichiometry problems. All right, so to quickly review stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is the study of quantitative or numerical relationships that we can find using chemical formulas and equations. Basically, the big picture here is if we know the mass of a reactant going into a process, we can figure out how many moles are going in. We can use that information to predict how many moles of a product are going to come out, and we can convert moles to grams. So when we look at a chemical equation, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So before we jump into the mole ratio stuff, let's just make sure we have the same background. So when we're talking about a chemical equation, the materials written on the left-hand side are the reactants. The materials written on the right-hand side are the products. So the reactants go in, the products come out. The two sides are connected by an arrow, and that arrow reads to make or yields. All right. So second thing that I see here is I see some numbers. Those two that I just circled, those are subscripts. We should be pretty familiar with subscripts from our work with formula writing and naming. When it comes to chemical processes um, and balancing equations, which we will be doing, um, there's a lot of accounting of what goes in and what comes out. So when we're counting atoms here, these twos right here, the subscripts, apply just to the element that they're written directly after. So that two applies to the CL, that two applies to the H. This other two that's written over here, this is a coefficient. And just like in math class, coefficients act to multiply. And they multiply everything written directly after it until you get to an arrow or a plus sign. So in other words, that 2 right there applies to the H and to the CL, both of the elements. Okay. So a chemical equations are written to follow the law of conservation, and I should say balanced of chemical equations, are written to follow the law of conservation of mass and matter. And to review what that law says, it says that what goes into a reaction has to come back out. So you're not losing atoms, you're not losing mass, in spite of the fact that they're getting rearranged. Okay. So, when I look at this equation here, and I try to set up, or try to use mole information, I want you to remember that the law of conservation of mass and matter is our guiding force. So, the coefficients in the balanced equation give us some information about the mole relationships. So according to the law of conservation of mass and matter, if you react one mole of magnesium, you should get out and with one mole, or sorry, with two moles of hydrogen chloride, you should form one mole of magnesium chloride and one mole of hydrogen gas. So it should become pretty apparent that these numbers right here that I got came from coefficients in the balanced equation. So it, every equation follows, or chemical process follows this law. Because of that, we can use those coefficients to represent mole relationships. So these mole relationships give us ways to, to compare two things, because remember that's what a ratio compares um, f uh, in the chemical equation. So that means we could compare reactant amounts to product amounts or vice versa. We could compare two reactants to each other. We could compare two products to each other. For the sake of learning this stuff, we're going to be comparing reactants to products. Okay? And I just want to emphasize, where do the values for the mole ratio come from? They come from coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. So what we're going to do now is look at three progressively more difficult examples. And they get uh, obviously more complex as we go. So the first one is not really a three-step stoichiometry problem, but it's showing you how mole ratios work. So if I'm looking at this equation here, which to translate this, this NH4NO3 is ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate decomposes to form dinitrogen, monoxide, and water. Okay, so according to the law of conservation of mass and matter, 
one mole of ammonium nitrate decomposes to form one mole of dinitrogen monoxide and two moles of water. So we're going to use that information. So here's what our question says. I'm reacting 3.25 moles of ammonium nitrate, so I'm using that. And I want to know how many moles of water are going to be made, so I'm using that. So I don't care about the dinitrogen monoxide, so I'm going to cross it off. All right, so we're going to be using picket fence to do a dimensional analysis, and these are going to get more complex. So I have 3.25 moles of NH4NO3. And I want to know how many moles of water is that going to make. Well, there's what I know from the equation, or not from the equation, from the problem. Here's what I know from the equation. According to the law of conservation of mass and matter, if I react one mole of ammonium nitrate, I'm going to get out two moles of water. So I can cancel. Moles of ammonium nitrate will cancel, and it leaves me with moles of water. So... 2 times 3.25, 6.5 moles of water. Now we can convert moles to grams, which is definitely more useful to us in the lab. The molar mass of water we do need. And so it's 2 times 1.01 plus 16. So it's 18.02 grams per mole. So, I know I have 6.5 moles of water. I know that one mole has a mass of 18.02 grams. So to figure out how many grams of water I would make if I did this reaction the way it was described, or how much I should make if I did that reaction as the way it's described, I would say 6.5 times 18.02, and I would get 117 point one three grams of water okay so as I said these are gonna get progressively more difficult one other thing before we get into the problem other things that you might see in chemical equations you might see s l g a q that's specifying either state of matter or dissolved in water so it's just basically telling you the format that the material is in. All right, now to the problem. So this equation, or here's the balanced equation for the Haber process, which is used to produce ammonia in the lab. Um, it says that one mole of nitrogen will react with three moles of hydrogen to produce two moles of ammonia. So let's look at what the problem is asking us. And remember that I got that information from the law of conservation of mass and matter. So the question says, how many moles of ammonia, so it's asking us about the NH3, are made when 16.81 grams of nitrogen react? So I don't care about the hydrogen at all. All right. So I know that I'm starting with 16.81 grams of nitrogen. I need the molar mass of nitrogen. Okay. Because, um, here's what I'm doing. I'm going to take grams of nitrogen, convert that to moles of nitrogen, use a mole ratio, and convert moles. When I use the mole ratio, it's going to give me moles of NH3, and I can convert that to grams of NH3. So we'll look at each step. I need the molar mass of nitrogen because to convert from grams to moles, I need that. Okay, so the molar mass of nitrogen is 14.01, which is the atomic mass of nitrogen times 2. So 28.02 grams. All right, so I'm going to erase that just because I'm concerned I'm going to run out of space. But you did see how to do that, and you should be familiar with that. All right, so the picket fence is going to start getting bigger. All right. So here's what I'm starting with, 16.81 grams of N2. I want to convert that to moles of N2. And I just showed you that one mole of N2 
has a mass of 28.02 grams. Okay, so that's going to cancel out my grams of N2. Okay. The next step is the mole ratio, so I've done that and that. Now, according to the law of conservation of mass and matter, if I react one mole of N2, I should get out two moles of NH3. Okay, so there's the mole ratio, and here's where we're at. Okay, so um, the last step right here is broken out separately. That's not always going to happen, but for the sake right now it is. So to figure out how many moles of NH3 I'm going to make, because notice everything else cancels, I'm going to say 16.81 times 2 divided by 28.02. And this is... would be helpful if I had that paper in front of me right away. Um, 1.2 moles of NH3. Okay. So the last step is to convert that to grams of NH3. Molar mass. is 14.01 plus 3 times 1.01, so 17.04. All right, so we just figured out that I have 1.2 moles of NH3. Okay, so moles of NH3 cancel, so I'm going to say 1.2 times 17.04, and I will get 20.45 grams of NH3 if the law of conservation of mass and matter holds true. All right, so there's the last problem, and it's the most complicated one. This reaction is to prepare carbon disulfide, um, and you react carbon and sulfur dioxide to prepare it and you get out some carbon monoxide. So let's look at what the question is asking us to do and what we know. So first thing is when I look at this I see that it says how many grams of CS2, so it's asking us about the carbon disulfide, for when 32.4 grams of carbon react. It's asking about carbon. So we don't care about the sulfur dioxide, we don't care about the carbon monoxide. So here's what we have to do in this problem. We're going to have to take grams of carbon, convert that to moles of carbon. We're going to have to use a mole ratio to compare carbon to carbon disulfide. Then we're going to know moles of carbon disulfide, and we're going to convert that to grams of carbon disulfide. Okay. So there's all of our steps. So a picket fence, really long. So now you guys are going to see why I've gotten after you for not documenting with your picket fence with your dimensional analysis. All right, so I start with grams of carbon. 32.4 grams of carbon. That's what I know. All right, to figure out moles of carbon, you just need to look up the atomic mass of carbon, which is 12.01 grams. So that takes care of grams to moles. That's done. The next thing is I need to compare um, moles of CS2 to moles of carbon. Well, if I react 5 moles of carbon, I should get out 1 mole of CS2. Okay, so moles of carbon will cancel. So that gives us we're here right now. Okay. Now, to go from moles of CS2 to grams of CS2, I know that one mole of CS2 is equal to its molar mass. So the molar mass of CS2 you find by adding up all the atomic masses. So 12.01 plus 2 times 32.07 gets you 76.15 grams per mole. Okay, so that goes there. Okay, so let's look at everything canceling here. Grams of carbon cancels. 
moles of carbon cancels, moles of CS2 cancels, and our final answer will be in grams of CS2. So you say 32.4 times 76.15 divided by 12.01 times 5, and you should get 41.09 grams of CS2.